the nerves of the foot. I was reminded of the foot because my one of my feet is being annoying right now. It's got plantar fasciitis and not letting me run. But we've talked about the muscles of the foot, bones of the foot, uh, the nerves of the lower limb in general. So we're going to look at the nerves of the foot in a little bit more detail. There are different nerves on different sides. This is the dorsal surface. This is the plantar surface or the sole of the foot. Um, they've got cutaneous jobs, that is their sensory from the skin. They've got motor jobs in that they innovate certain muscles. What I'll try and do is make it easy to remember what does what. I can try. It's a lofty goal, but I can try. So the nerves of the foot come from well, the lumbosacral plexus all the way up here. Um, but actually, take that off. There's the sciatic nerve. The sciatic nerve is going to become the tibial nerve and the common fibular nerve, and those are going to run to the foot. The tibial nerve is going to run through the calf, so this being the leg here, run through the posterior leg between these layers of muscle. And if we look medially, here's the medial malleolus, we see the tibial nerve running around to the foot there. So there's the tibial nerve, which is going to run to the, the, the sole of the foot, the plantar surface. And then the common fibular nerve, it's called common because it's going, to give, it's going to divide into superficial and deep fibular nerves. You can swap the word fibula for peroneal. So the common peroneal nerve becomes superficial and deep peroneal nerves. Same structures, just peroneal and fibula. And the deep fibular nerve is going to go, well, it's going to find its way into the anterior leg and run through here to the dorsum of the foot. And the superficial fibular nerve is going to go into the lateral compartment and find its way also into the dorsum of the foot here, but they're going to do slightly different jobs. So um, we have superficial and deep fibular nerves. We have branches of the tibial nerve, but we also have the sural nerve and the saphenous nerve. These are cutaneous nerves. So on this model, we've taken the skin off. That's what cutaneous is referring to. So by taking away the skin, we've also taken away the cutaneous nerves. So a bit of imagination will be required. Um, but the, uh, the, the, the common fibula and tibial nerves will both give off branches which will form the sural nerve, which is gonna run down the skin of the calf and innervate the lateral leg and the lateral foot. Whereas the, the saphenous nerve, well, way up here, we've got the femoral nerve, which is gonna innervate the muscles of the anterior compartment of the thigh, but the, the femoral nerve will give off the saphenous nerve. This is the, the sartorius muscle here. If we take the sartorius muscle off, we can see that subsartorial groove or that adductor canal. And in there, we have the saphenous nerve running with the femoral artery and vein. So the saphenous nerve is going to run down here and that's going to innervate the medial leg and the medial foot and also a bit of patella and stuff. So when we're thinking about cutaneous innervation of the foot, we just think of the, the saphenous nerve medially, the sural nerve laterally, and then these other nerves are going to innovate the dorsum and sole of the foot, but we'll look at that in more detail now. Okay, here is just the foot, which has more detail. There's the big toe, so that's medial foot. There's the little toe, so that's lateral foot. Um, so here's the calf. And there we have, so that's the, the medial malleolus um, of the tibia. Uh, a landmark you can palpate on yourself and look we have the tibial nerve posterior to the medial malleolus and it's running around the medial malleolus so it goes from posterior to inferior the tendons here are tied down by the retinaculum so the tibial nerve is also going to pass through this retinaculum to the sole of the foot and this muscle here is going to flex the toes flex the digits so that's flexor digitorum brevis, it's the short one because there's a long one in the calf. So if I take flexor digitorum brevis off, and then here's the big toe here. The big toe gets called halusis or halucis. So this muscle here 
is gonna, it's gonna abduct the great toe. So if I take off abductor hallucis, now we can see how the tibial nerve, as it passes through the tarsal tunnel, that's the connective tissue that's covering it over there, it divides into two plantar nerves, a medial plantar nerve and a lateral plantar nerve. Uh, and you can see where the lateral plantar nerve is going. But the first branch that the tibial nerve gives as it curves around here into the foot is the medial calcaneal branch. Uh, so the calcaneus is the heel bone. So the medial calcaneal nerve is going to carry sensory innervation from the skin of the medial heel and the plantar heel. So the plantar heel, this part of the skin here, is, is sending sensory innervation back through the medial calcaneal nerve, this branch of the tibial nerve. All right, but what about the medial and lateral plantar nerves then? What we can see is the lateral plantar nerve is running laterally. This muscle here is called quadratus plantae. So that's, it's running between quadratus plantae and um, flexor digitorum brevis, right? And as it runs out here, it's gonna divide and give off a superficial branch and a deep branch. There are lots of layers of muscles in the foot, but can you see how that branch remains superficial and the other branch is going deeply. The reason I'm taking the lateral plantar nerve first is because it kind of does most of the work. It's going to innovate most of the muscles of the foot that are not involved with the big toe. So the lateral plantar nerve is running off to the little toe. So it's going to innovate the muscles special to the little toe. There is an abductor of the little toe, so abductor digiti minimi. There is a, a flexor digiti minimi, a flexor of the little toe. It's going to innervate most of the small muscles of the foot. So it's, it's going to innervate most of the lumbricals, um, these wormy muscles here. Um, I'm not going to try and describe the lumbricals. It's going to innervate most of the lumbricals. It's going to innervate all of the interosseous muscles, which are generally abducting and adducting the toes. And it's going to come all the way around and it's going to innervate the adductor hallucis muscle. So if there's a muscle out here, which I took off, abductor hallucis, which is going to abduct the big toe, the muscle on the other side that adducts the big toe brings it back in again. Adductor hallucis is innervated by the the lateral plantar nerve, or also quadratus plantae is innervated by the lateral plantar nerve. It's a lot, right? In terms of the skin and sensory innervation, the lateral plantar nerve is gonna be responsible for sensory innervation from the skin on the plantar surface of the foot, the sole of the foot, just the anterior two thirds and just the one and a half toes from the lateral side, so the little toe and the next toe, half the next toe. So it's going to carry sensory innovation just from the, the strip of skin across here, right? The medial plantar nerve will be responsible for carrying sensory innovation from the skin of the anterior two thirds of the sole of the foot on the medial side for three and a half toes. So they're going to meet here. I always struggle to remember where they meet, but it's that toe there. So if we see the medial plantar nerve here on the other side, so remember it's coming in and it's covered over by abductor hallucis muscle. Um, we can see that it's at the toes, how it's running to the toes. We have these digital branches. So they're, they're going to be common digital branches before they've divided. And when they give off the final branches, which are running up either side of the toe, those are the proper digital branches there. So those are the branches that are running to the skin of the toes, right? And also the sole of the foot. Um, what about the muscular jobs of the medial plantar nerve then? Well, it is going to innovate muscles associated with the big toe on the medial side. So it's gonna innovate, well, the stuff we haven't mentioned yet. Uh, the medial plantar nerve is gonna innovate abductor hallucis. It's gonna innovate flexor hallucis brevis, the short flexor of the big toe. Oh, and it's gonna innovate um, flexor digitorum brevis. And it's gonna innovate one of the lumbricals, so the lumbrical over on this side, although that level of detail probably isn't useful for most people. 
So the lateral plantar nerve is running off to the little toe, it innervates most of the muscles of the sole of the foot, including adductor halysis. The medial plantar nerve then runs towards the great toe and innervates the remaining muscles, abductor halysis, flexor halysis brevis, flexor digitorum brevis, and one umbilical. So that's, those are the terminal branches of the tibial nerve. What about the dorsum of the foot then? Well, we can see just about see the deep fibular nerve under there and the superficial fibular nerve running into the foot. Now the deep fibular nerve, so there's that retinaculum on this side, the connective tissue tying down the tendons. So the deep fibular nerve is coming from this anterior compartment. It's deep to the retinaculum. It runs into the foot with the dorsalis pedis artery and it's gonna innervate all of the muscles of the dorsum of the foot, which is extensor digitorum brevis, the short extensor of the toes, and extensor halysis brevis, the short extensor of the big toe. That's it for muscles. That's all the muscles of the dorsum of the foot. And in terms of cutaneous innervation, it's gonna run down to the web space between toes one and two, between the great toe and the next toe. All it's gonna do is carry sensory innervation from the skin here. That's the deep fibular nerve or the deep peroneal nerve. Now, the superficial peroneal nerve or superficial fibular nerve, it's gonna look after the rest of the sensory innervation from the skin of the dorsal of the dorsum of the foot. Now, the superficial fibular nerve up in the, the leg somewhere, up in the lateral leg, it was innervating the muscles here, but it continues to the skin. So it's gonna pierce through the deep fascia to become a cutaneous nerve. And in fact, it's, it's branched into two cutaneous nerves. That, that's what we can see here. We can see the, the medial dorsal cutaneous nerve of the foot, and we can see the intermediate dorsal cutaneous nerve of the foot. And these two are running to the dorsum of the foot and they're gonna be responsible for carrying sensory innovation back from the dorsal skin of the foot. That's all they do, just sensory innovation. So apart from that web space there, they're carrying all the sensory innovation back. And remember that we have uh, the sural nerve carrying sensory innovation back from the skin, partly laterally, and the saphenous nerve partly medially. So apart from that, everything else, these branches of the superficial fibular nerve are responsible for sensory innovation there. Is that it? That's it. Uh, why, why are the nerves of the foot so important? Peripheral neuropathies are a big concern. So a loss of sensation to the extremities and particularly the foot, because we're, used, we're walking on the foot, right? It gets a fair bit of wear and tear. Peripheral neuropathies, peripheral neuropathies well, Sensation from the foot is important in protecting the foot. Um, and this is most notable in, in diabetes, right? In diabetes, we see peripheral neurop neuropathies. So patients don't realize that they have injured the skin of the foot because they're not feeling those sensations you would associate with soreness as the skin is being damaged, right? So they continue to wear away the skin and you get, you get an injury, you get a lesion. On top of that, diabetics often have uh, peripheral um, cardiovascular issues. So the blood flow to the extremities is also poor, which means that healing is not as good as it should be. So diabetics are at risk of developing injuries in the skin of the foot because of peripheral neuropathies, damage to these nerves and damage to the blood vessels. And these injuries are so poor uh, that they often result in amputations of toes and amputations of uh, parts of the foot or the whole foot or further, right? So diabetics know that foot care is really important. They can't rely just on how the foot feels because that might change over time. Um, they need to keep an eye on the skin of the foot and make sure it's in good condition and look after it because they are at great risk of developing large injuries that can only be um, cured by removing that part of the foot. Um, the pathological mechanisms by which that occurs are not entirely understood. Uh, it's still ongoing work, but the nerves of, uh, of the foot, 
in some detail. Okay, I hope that was useful. See you uh, next week. Thank you.